Hey guys, and welcome back to PlumbingPartsPro.com. Today, it's a couple of days before Thanksgiving, and I had a customer come into my shop saying that uh, his shower faucet was leaking, it's come apart, fell off in his hand. And um, it's an American Standard push-pull faucet. Here's the part he brought me. So it's really dated, worn, a lot of grime. You see a lot of buildup on it. Um, the stem actually pulled off in his hand and came apart. So water shooting out of the house or out of the faucet into the shower and um, he's in a bad spot right now. Does not have isolation valves, got the whole house cut off and he asked us to help him out. So what we're gonna do, I've got 75% of the parts to fix this today and uh, we're gonna try to get him some service and uh, help him out a little bit. So stay tuned and we're gonna fix this thing coming up next. All right, we're back here in the shop and uh, this is the, the American Standard part. Okay, we're here in the shop and this is the American Standard part here. Okay, so typically right here there is a set screw Okay, you remove that set screw. Now it's not like any typical set screw. You remove this set screw entirely to pull this handle off because there's a pin. And what that pin does, it goes through the stem. So I know a lot of set screws on faucets, you just loosen it, pull the handle off, but you can tug and tug, this won't come off. However, this one is broken, okay? So this is just gonna come off in our hands because the stem did break, okay? Um, and the stem come off like this. Now a new stem looks like this. Okay. Whoops. That's what it looks like brand new. Okay. All one piece. Um, and as you can see, if you can see that right in here, there is a hole that goes all the way through it. And that's where that pin goes through, okay, for that set screw to hold that handle on, okay. So now what we're going to do, first we're going to clean this thing up. Get all this grime and this green buildup up off this thing and uh, really clean this thing up. We're going to put some safety goggles on and go from there. Then we're going to start taking this off. Uh, actually, we'll probably cut this off first and uh, get to the main valve body before we uh, clean it up. All right. Let's do it. Okay, I finally got this trim piece off, this sleeve. And I tell you what, this thing was a bear to get off. Uh, it threads on this, these threads here, but it, it usually gets corroded and just stuck on there. So I, I couldn't get it off by threading it off. I tried to cut it off. I uh, <clears throat> basically had to destroy this thing to get this thing off. And I got it all the way down that far, which is where the, the shoulder is on this brass piece. So it wouldn't, I couldn't cut into it anymore. And it just would not cut off. I kind of got to a stopping point. So what I did, we've got some of this oil. Aero Croil. The oil that creeps, loses frozen metal parts. I tell you what, this is the best lubricant and penetrating oil I've ever used. I put some of this on there. Within 30 seconds, I screwed this thing right off. Not a problem. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can buy this. It's better than PB Blaster. It's better than WD-40. This is top of the line stuff. All right, check that out. So now we got this off, we're gonna go to the wire wheel, clean up all this grime and get this thing cleaned up and fixed up. All right, we got this cleaned up a little bit. It's not perfect. We got a lot of that grime off. Just kind of 
shine it up, make it look a little nicer. Um, all the threaded joints, uh, easier to work in and out. Now we're gonna disassemble it and then maybe clean the nuts up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these uh, two nuts off here. They got a very large flathead screwdriver slot or really a crescent wrench of some sort or open end wrench. Uh, all right, we got a good size flathead screwdriver here. What we're gonna do is go in here and try to uh, there we go, get that loose. All right, that came loose pretty good. Sometimes they're really difficult to get out. Okay, we're gonna set those to the side. And we're gonna clean those up on the wire wheel as well. If you can look inside here, there's a spring and piston inside there. See that? We're gonna replace those. This one even had a filter in it, which they don't really use anymore. Wow. That's the spring. That filter's kind of still stuck in there. Really all it is is a mesh screen. I have to dig that out. That's just coming all to pieces. They probably had a hard time getting uh, hot water out of this thing. Probably didn't work real well. Wow. This is probably one of the worst ones I've seen. May have to take a wire brush to this. Make sure you wear safety goggles when you do this stuff. A lot of pieces, bits and pieces tend to fly. There we go. That came out real well. Okay. Next what we're gonna do is uh, get this cleaned up a little bit, clean these nuts up, and then next we're gonna take the seats out of this thing, and I'll show you how to do that. So this is a seat. This is what we're trying to remove. This is a new seat. And that's what fits down, threads down in this hole in this body. So what we're gonna do, I took just a basic L-shaped seat tool. Uh, a seat tool's got two different sides. It's got a square side and it's got a hex side. Make sure which seat you have because um, you don't want to round it out. So check with your new seat. You see the bottom of that, it's got kind of a hex to it. So we want to use the hex side. I find some of the easiest ways to do this, if you have access to a vise, screw the seat tool into a vise. Get that good and snug. Okay, slide the valve body over the seat tool. Give it a little tap, because we don't want to round these out, these seats out, okay? Once it's in there good, you got a little leverage here. Twist that thing. We're gonna remove this thing counterclockwise. This is the one that's pretty darn dirty. Still getting hung up. I'm gonna have to run that wire brush through there again. Just kind of pushing it out through these holes in the back and in the bottom. Okay. And that just shows how bad this seat was compared to the other one. Okay, that's not a good seat. We're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Slide it over the seat tool, give it a good tap. Turn it counterclockwise, break that free. I can already feel this one, it's much easier than the other. I 
and that one just came off. Okay. Like I said, now I'm gonna run a, um, a wire brush through here. I use a half inch fitting brush for like copper fittings. Really clean those threads up. It's an old valve that you'd kind of be delicate with because you can't get these anymore. The only other option would be to replace the entire valve body in the wall. These were on shower faucets only. You didn't really see these on tubs. Um, I mean, because there's, yeah, just one, two, three, you're hot, you're cold, and then your outlet. So it's uh, just a shower faucet. And typically, when they built homes, they did not put access panels for shower stalls, only for tub and showers. Which means you would have to either go into a wall, cut into a wall, or cut into the tile, which could be very costly. Okay. So we got our new seats. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, it's not required, put just a little bit of pipe joint compound on the threads. Really just to kind of lubricate the, the threads as it goes in. And like I said, it's a very, very little. You really don't wanna get it on the seating surface just a little bit, I mean, because you can't put Teflon tape on these. And typically they're brass to brass ground joints. Sometimes it'll be just enough to cause a leak. So it can't hurt it. Go the opposite direction. Tighten this up. Give it a little tap so it doesn't get rounded out. Don't over tighten it, just get it good and snug. And now we've got our new seat in here. We're gonna do that to the opposite side. Just a little bit on the edge. It's so small, it's kind of hard to, to get it on the threads without making a mess. Okay. Keep a pressure, applying a little bit of pressure. Tap on it. Just snug and then clean out any uh, residual pipe joint compound or any residue that might be in there. Okay? Okay. We got these cleaned up. We're gonna put some new O-rings on here. Just slide these over. And they should come in the rebuild kit. I'm gonna put links in the description for all these parts. <clears throat> Next thing what we're going to do is we're going to replace the springs. This is the new spring, okay? It, it, a lot of times this comes apart in the package and they just snap together. Alright, next uh, what we're going to do, get rid of this. I'm going to clean up these, uh, the nuts here. This one was the one that was the worst. It even has some of that screen in the bottom of the, the cap. Um, what I'm going to do is try to clean this out. These got O-rings on them. Remove these O-rings. Clean it up on the wire wheel. And we're going to replace them and reassemble. So now we're going to install the springs in the piston. What this does is uh, just kind of hangs inside the... Uh, the valve body. Uh, sometimes in the package you'll see the spring and the piston separated uh, and they just snap together. Um, the spring is pliable, kind of snaps over that little end uh, and we just we just drop them in here. Okay, That drops in like that and then we reinstall the nut with the new o-rings. Okay. We'll 
tighten these up with that screwdriver until it's snug. So now we're going to take the packing nut out in the packing and check that out. I'll put this in the vise. Be careful putting this in the vise. Um, you don't want to over tighten and clamp down on it and crush it, so to say. Maybe egg it, causing troubles. And that was really loose. That might be the whole reason it was leaking out of the front. Okay. So this is a uh, unique packing. This one here, it really, it's it's got Teflon washers. These are Teflon rings. And what it does, there's two Teflon rings in here. And what it does is when you tighten the packing nut, it grips it around the stem to keep it from leaking out of the front. So now what we're gonna do is install the stem, okay? So what it does, if you see the stem here, it's, it's a oblong shaped or egg shaped. And what it does, when you pull this outward, what it does, those pistons that ride down, it opens those up and turns the water on, lets water through. And then you turn left or right and it'll kick those pistons over, okay? Uh, we're going to install this. This goes in from the back side, right through here, just like that. And now we're going to snug down on the packing nut to squeeze those Teflon packing seals around the uh, stem. Now, this is kind of a uh, fine line and how you how, how much you tighten it up the more you tighten it up the harder it is to turn the handle if it's too loose it's gonna leak out the front so you just want to kind of work with it and play with it just till it's snug nice smooth but it's got some friction there and really that's it um, so now what we're going to do is just screw the new trim plate on. The new one's just screw on real easy because we got it all cleaned up. And then we're going to reinstall it with the screws in the side back in the valve, back in the wall, and then the handle will go on last. And as you can see, it's a little bit better view. That's why I said early on, you pull the set screw all the way out um, for it to work. This is the replacement handle, just like the original. Got some fingerprints on it. Has the set screw. And if you look inside, you can see that pin. It goes all the way through that circle, through that stem. And this is like say one of the last things you would do. Hey guys, and thanks again for watching. I appreciate you um, following along with us. I'll leave all the links in the description below. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it.